So I imagine when it comes to motors and generators, flux switching isn't something that immediately springs to mind. But in terms of generators, it's the power source on just about all the missiles that there are. And for radio, the Anderson generator produced huge amounts. For motors, it's what Dyson is using in his latest handheld. And the reason is they're incredibly simple to make, that they're mechanically very simple. They can turn at stupidly high speeds. We're talking about one uh, to 200,000 RPM. They can get connected directly to a turbine without any gearing and give huge output because of that relationship of speed. So there's an awful lot that can recommend flux switching when looking at generation that we just don't think about. Normally flux switching, well we'll meet it every day when it's in things like guitar pickups. It's what Flynn was on about when he's looking at his fluxing uh, generator and it's what you find in units that you can turn off and on. All of these use flux switching. So if I hold a couple of magnets up in the air and wave them out, about, the magnetic field is going all over the place. It's following a path like that out in air and it can have an effect on absolutely everything. If I take a couple of pieces of steel and pop them one on top of the other, these are called keepers now, that magnetic flux is contained within the steel because that's by preference where it wants to go. It always wants to follow the path of least resistance. And the least resistance, or if you like reluctance, is through that steel rather than through the air. So now all the magnetic flux is following the path of least reluctance and it's going through that steel. So we've created a flux path. We've done this before as well when we bent magnetic fields around. You can do that if you use a path of least reluctance for the flux to actually follow. It will want to follow the material where it has the least resistance or reluctance in magnetic terms to flow. Now by changing that path, by changing the arrangement of the metal and giving the magnetic flux a path that it more wants to go, I can direct that path to where I want it to be. And that's the principle that switching flux relies on. Now switched flux alternators have an arrangement like this. That rotor is just a piece of soft magnetic iron and as it rotates it offers a flux path that can change and the changing flux path means that the magnets follow that path and change their direction from north to south and because it's now a collapsing field and a rotating field it generates. You can use those ideas to make a switching flux generator or a simplified version of it. So there's a coil. Now that holds a bit of pipe and it was exactly 10 millimeters. So I've got a 10 millimeter bolt. There it is. And just cut the head off that bolt, cut it to size and then cut a slot in it. And that's what we end up with. So we've got a little driving slot right there, drilled it, cut the end off and that slides nicely in and out of the centre of uh, that We need coil. some kind of crank, which is there, and that's made out of a bit of aluminium disc and a bolt. Another little bit there to make the connecting rod, and you can see it's just two holes in a strip of aluminium. Then we need something to act as a kind of flywheel, sort of drive belt kind of thing, and lots and lots of things will do. I just so happen to have this from a printer, which is kind of cute, so I'll be using that, but a ton of things will do, including a lump of cast concrete. Now the final thing we need for this to make the whole thing work is a magnet. The magnets are absolutely everywhere and I'm using this from a speaker, so this section here. If you hit this hard what will happen is the lump will come off and you'll have two bits of metal with a central core and the actual magnet there. When you separate those out what you have is the disc of metal and then the ring magnet itself. You need the disc and you need the ring. You actually need two of them. So that goes there, and this is from another magnet, and of course I could stack the magnets up, and the other disc goes on the other side. So that bit there is part of the generation, so you need so that. That's the generation <laughs> coil together. So the coil's there glued on that bit, they've got a magnet in between, and then another lump of metal with the coil coming out. Now we need to put the actual flywheel together. There's the flywheel I'm going to use. Clearly you could use a big uh, cog if you wanted. I could put a drive belt around this if I wanted, but that's what I'm using. Then it's on a bit of eight mil rod as a bar. Then put a spacer on there. And then our bearing, and our bearing is a skater bearing and a Munson ring. And uh, then we put that on which is our crank that goes on there like that. 
put a pin through it and that's the actual crank mechanism more or less done. So this bit goes on there and then the cut off piece of rod that we had goes on there. So I need to fasten all those together and mount them on a pretty board. Okay, and there it is all put together. Now, there's a few things to point out about this actually. When we rotate that, obviously this plunger goes in and out, but this plunger is just steel. There's no magnets on this. The coil and the magnets do not move. Only the plunger moves. Now it works because it's switching reluctance. We have this big ring magnet here and it's north facing that way and it's south facing that way. All the magnetism goes into these two steel plates, but there is no path between the north and the south until we put that rod in. When we put that rod in, the flux can pass up the rod and go from north to south. And of course the coil's right in there. So when it does that, the coil gets a magnetic field. Now when we draw that rod out, we take away that path so that magnetic field collapses. So even though the coil and the magnet are stationary, switching the flux using this in and out of the rod allows that magnetic field to grow and fall and grow and fall. So of course, it generates. Let's look what we can do just from me turning it by hand. Now, it's a uh, AC, obviously, and I've got the uh, meter on volts, and if I give that a spin by hand, We can get 0.6 of a volt out of that just by me spinning it by hand, which is pretty cool. Let's stick that onto amps and we'll give it another spin up. And we get 40 milliamps out of it. So there we go. So very simple arrangement. There's a passable job indeed. Now bear in mind, these are used in um, torpedoes for some really quite serious power. And you can upscale that to be quite complicated as I showed you the alternator version and animation. So it offers great opportunity and has the advantage of being extremely lightweight in terms of the rotor. So it can spin incredibly quickly, which means you can connect it straight up to a turbine. Anyway, I thought I would share that with you. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please remember to like and subscribe.